Good morning, Linwood Covenant, friends, family, far and wide. Dave Osterkamp here coming to you live from Linwood, Minnesota, filming at church again today. For those of you looking for first word, yesterday, July 9th, uh, we apologize due to some extenuating circumstances. We weren't able to film yesterday, but we're back today. Excited to be with you. Blue sky out there, sunshine, a little nice breeze. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying another nice Minnesota summer day. Uh, as we pause each mid-morning to seek God together, uh, we often have a little video that brings a smile to your face, some hope, and today's video is no different. Um, it's just a great reminder of some good ways uh, that you can love your neighbor well. Um, a great video of faith in action, so please enjoy. For a deaf person like Ibby Paracha of Leesburg, Virginia, getting the drink you want at Starbucks can be a tall order. But Ibby says not here, thanks to a barista who recently did something truly Hello. grande. And when I came in, the first thing she did was she wrote the note. So I thought maybe she had a question for me or something. But it really wasn't a question at all. And as I read through it, it shocked me. He immediately posted this picture of the note, which read, I've been learning ASL, American Sign Language just so you can have the same experience as everyone else. What can I get for you today? That barista is Crystal Payne. Do you Trenta iced coffee? She's new here. In fact, milk? she'd only waited on Ibby once before deciding to go home, go on the internet, and learn sign language for him. Maybe I spent like three or more hours on it. Getting ready to take one order? Yeah. If he's a regular and I want to make that connection with my regulars, I should be able to at least Ask him what he wants to drink. What you want to drink. Today, Crystal knows everything she needs to wait on Ibby. Caramel frappuccino, please. And that really is the extent of their interaction. To Crystal, it's no big deal. But to Ibby, who says navigating a hearing world is often frustrating, what Crystal did was a wonderful gesture that he will never forget. He even saved the note. It's something that was very inspirational, so I wanted to, to keep it in the frame. Sometimes, customer service gets a bad rap, and it's often well-deserved. Hi, what can I get for you today? But there are those frontline workers who go above and beyond, not for a tip or because the boss is watching, but because kindness is who they are, and the customer, all they care about. And it's just something that really gave me genuine happiness. Even now? Yeah, even now, still smiling. <laughs> Good stuff right there, just going the extra mile. Our devotional from the Common Word has a quote from a Japanese uh, Christian, Toyohiko Kagawa. He lived in 1888 to 1960 and did a lot with the poor in Japan, um, a Christian reformer, evangelist, labor activist. And he wrote, uh, he wrote this, he said, I read in a book that a man called Christ went about doing good. It's very disconcerting to me that I am so easily satisfied with just going about. The video, obviously, this gal um, wasn't satisfied with just going about. She was looking for ways to, to go above and beyond and to love her customers. And so good reminders that just simple things, little things can make a big difference. Most of these things don't end up on TV or featured by Steve Hartman, but they happen every day. You do them, we all do little things, and, and uh, I always think it's fascinating um, when Steve Hartman does a story, like he says, everybody has a story. He could make uh, your story, my story, anybody's story into a touching three-minute segment. So keep on doing good, finding little ways to go above and beyond. Here's our prayer for this morning that we start each day with, O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun, as it was in the beginning, a glory to the Father, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The refrain in our devotional says this, Deliver us from ourselves, O God, and bring us home to life with you. Deliver us from ourselves, and bring us home to a life with you. Today we're reading from Psalms 53. The first three verses says, The fool says in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. 
Everyone who has turned away, all have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When God restores his people, let, Jake, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. The word of the Lord. May God look down and see there are some that seek after him. That's what we seek to do uh, today and each day uh, at first word. Now we're reading the story of Gideon in the book of Judges. Yesterday we would have read chapters 7 and 8, parts of it, where we see the great victory that Gideon had gotten over the Midianites, where he whittled his army down to 300 men, and they had torches in vases, and they had trumpets. They blew the trumpets in the middle of the night, broke open the torches, scared the army that turned on itself, and routed the Midianites. And now Gideon is the victor, and we'll see how this goes as we read in Judges chapter 8 today. The Israelites said to Gideon, Rule over us, you and your son, your grandsons, because you have saved us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon told them, I will not rule over you, nor will my son rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. Good statement by Gideon. Not everything's going to be good in this passage, but let's dwell on that, that good statement. Let the Lord rule over you. And he said, I do have one request that each of you give me an earring from your share of the plunder. It was the custom of the Ishmaelites to wear gold earrings. They answered, We'll be glad to give them. So they spread out a garment, and each of them threw a ring from his plunder onto it. The weight of the gold rings he asked for came to 1,700 shekels, not counting the ornaments, the pendants, and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian or the chains that were on their camels' necks. Gideon made the gold into an ephod, which he placed in Oprah, his town, All Israel prostituted themselves by worshiping it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and his family. Bad move. Bad move, Gideon. The the Midians were subdued before the Israelites and did not raise its head again during Gideon's lifetime. The land had peace for 40 years. 40 years of peace. Good job. Jerub Baal, or Gideon, son of Joash, went back home to live. He had 70 sons of his own, for he had many wives. That's not necessarily saying that's a good thing. It's just what happened. His concubines who lived in Shechem also bore him a son, whom he named Abimelech. Gideon, son of Joash, died at a good old age and was buried in the tomb of his father, Joash and Oprah of the Abizarites. No sooner had Gideon died than the Israelites again prostituted themselves to the Baals, and they set up Baal Bereth as their god, and did not remember the Lord their God, who had rescued them from the hands of all their enemies on every side. They also failed to show any loyalty to the family of Jerubbaal, that is Gideon, in spite of all the good things he had done for them. The word of the Lord. We see again success and peace being followed with forgetting who brought the success and peace and Gideon and the Israelites uh, really failing in a lot of ways after God has brought them deliverance. Um, A similar story that we see in Judges and we see in our own life, um, a good reminder um, to seek after God, especially when things are are good. Now we're going to continue to read the story of Paul as he brings the gospel to uh, southern Europe and and the country of Turkey and how he goes and preaches and, and, and really has a hard life as he sees many converts, but also has his life put at risk many times. So we're reading from Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them. So they had gotten kicked out of Rome, Aquila and Priscilla, you read a lot about them in Acts, and they, uh, they were really refugees now living in Corinth. And because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was, in fact, the Messiah. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titus Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue leader, and his entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard Paul believed and were baptized. 
One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. For I am with you. And no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. Through all of Paul's difficulties, uh, Crispus, the synagogue leader, came to faith. And Jesus said, in this city, I have many people. Corinth was a, a trading city, a shipping city. There was lots of sinful behavior in Corinth, but there was also the light of the, of the church in Corinth. And 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians was written to correct and to try to keep this church on the right track. And so it was a city of refuge, really, for Paul in these days. Here's a quote from John Wesley, an 18th century British evangelist and church reformer. He said, I believe merciful God regards the lives and tempers of men more than their ideas. I believe he respects the goodness of the heart rather than the clearness of the head. Wesley's saying God's really about uh, what's inside of you, how your heart beats. Do you love your neighbor as yourself? Let's pray today, and as we pray, we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer. I encourage you to spend a few minutes with us. God, we lift up our world, a world that's hurting, a world that's broken. We pray for those um, that are dealing uh, with this sickness, our frontline responders. We know many hospitals in our south are very crowded, and the work is hard and, and, uh, and often um, often sobering. And so we pray for health and strength. We pray that you would bring the men and women into work with renewed energy. Um, we pray that there might be some breakthroughs in our medical field and our sciences to deal with this virus. Um, we pray um, for all of those um, that are sick and those that are treating the sick. Today we pray this prayer uh, from our hearts that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Last paragraph from our devotional says, Lord God, thank you that we are unable to save ourselves and that each time we try, we fail. Have mercy on us. Be the strength in our weakness. Clear our heads of the foolishness of believing we can be our own gods. Steer our hearts to utter dependence on you. Utter dependence on you. As our refrain says, deliver us from ourselves, O God, and bring us home to life with you. This Sunday, we're gathering in our backyard. It looks like beautiful weather, so we hope to see you there. Um, thanks for joining us at First Word. Here's our benediction. May this give you peace today. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever He may send you. May He guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May He bring you home rejoicing at the wonders He has shown you. May He bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Hope to see you on Sunday. You can watch from your cars or uh, bring a lawn chair and an umbrella and enjoy uh, the out of doors. Also, um, if you're at home and that's the best choice for you, that's totally understandable. We will be broadcasting, streaming live on our YouTube channel right here. So we'll see you in one form or another on Sunday. Have a great day, my friends. Take care.